Hey there, welcome, thanks for joining me. So today we're going to be making some vases that you can basically reverse and use either way and also a doormat. But I have a question for you guys. Let me know, do you think this is more modern, boho, farmhouse style, or a little bit of everything? To be honest, I think it's a little bit of everything. That's why I added it all to my title. So let's go ahead and get started with today's DIY. The first one we're going to be making is our um, vases. And basically all I did was grab two different vases. Um, you can get any kind you want, but what we did instead of um, gluing them I guess you could say right side up, we're going to glue both bottoms together. That way you can flip them over and use them either way. So um, some of them you can use as candle holders and some of them are longer um, jars you can use as flower vases. So yeah, let's go ahead and start making our vases. And what we're going to do is like I said, glue both bottoms together using some E6000 and some hot glue. Now this is another cup that you can get from Dollar Tree and this is I'm going to recycle from another project that I no longer am using right now with the same colors. So it's the fish bowl, the smaller size one from Dollar Tree. Again, just adding some E6000 and hot glue to your bottom of your vase and then just gluing both bottoms together. Making sure that you line them up as much as uh, you can and then just set them aside and allow them to dry. Now this one is a glass that said bride to be or bride's party. I wanted to try to show you where it was said or bachelor party, something like that on there, but it's a glass. And I had spray painted it gray, gray to use for uh, Valentine's. So what I decided to do is recycle that and also use one of these glass uh, tea light holders from Dollar Tree as well. These used to come in two pack, a pack of two, and I'm not sure if they even have any more of these or sell them anymore because I haven't seen them for a while, but I still have some, so I went ahead and used that. Another option is to get the pack of four of the glass uh, mini little bowls that they have at Dollar Tree, and you can use that. So once you're done adding all your glue to those, go ahead and spray paint them the color of your choice, and then just allow them to dry. So now what we're going to do is our doormat. And the first thing you're going to go ahead and grab are all of your ropes. Now these, I use, I'm using uh, one of the nautical ropes from Dollar Tree. And I basically what I did was I unraveled it and it comes in three ropes in one. So I just went ahead and did that. And I'm using two of the nautical ropes from um, Dollar Tree to make this DIY. And all I did was add a dot of glue in the center of my rug, and then I'm just starting to twist my larger nautical rope around itself. Now this DIY is pretty easy to do. It is just time consuming. Um, in real time, this took me about two hours to make. So, you know, pop in a good movie or maybe listen to the podcast or something like that and go ahead and sit down and work on this mat. Now it is very durable and um, I think you can even use it on your wall. You guys let me know once we're all done, would you hang this on your wall? I think it's beautiful and I mean, I, I don't know, maybe I would hang it on my wall or use it as a placemat or maybe something on my island. But you let me know, would you use it somewhere else besides just as a doormat? So basically what I'm doing again is just wrapping the one of the three uh, ropes from my nautical rope, uh, just intertwining, wrapping it around in a circle, adding hot glue every time I wrap it around. And if you don't feel comfortable using just hot glue, go ahead and add some E6000 or fix all glue um, to your rope as well. Just make sure you tighten it as you go. So in other words, so you won't have any gaps, just go ahead and push it onto the other ropes as you're turning it. One good thing about this kind of um, 
mat is that basically you can make any kind of design you want um, one of my daughters even said how come I didn't paint the rope I could have painted it and made a different design as well so that's something I might do as well um, maybe paint some of the ropes just to give it a different look um, but if you do do that and you have an Instagram uh, please tag me on your mats so I can see how that looks if you decide to paint the ropes as well. So what I did was I decided to make one large circle of the rope in the middle of my mat. And then I'm going to make two smaller circles with the same kind of rope. Um, I'm basically just doing them on either side of the larger circle. And you can do make as this as big or as little as you like. All the circles basically is up to taste. Um, if you wanted just to make one larger one, just continue to wrap around in circles the rope um, with the small center circle that you already started. So here I'm just gluing it the rope onto the one corner and just basically doing the, the same thing, wrapping it around into a circle, adding glue as I go. Like I said, this is very easy. It is just, you know, it takes a while. So you have to have patience with this or uh, maybe just break it up into a few days if you don't want to do it all at one time. So the small, the second circle that I'm making right now, I decided to make it smaller than the larger one in the middle. Um, and then I just decided to add another one of the smaller circles with the uh, left rope that I had on the top um, corner. So like I said, you can add these circles or add any kind of design that you want. If you don't want to make circles, you want to make a square design, um, just make a square and just continue to do that and make as many as you like around your mat. and then. You'll see what I do to fill in the rest. But this is this is an option that you can do any kind of design. Uh, just basically use your imagination and figure out what kind of design you want. Maybe look on Pinterest and uh, think of some different designs that some of the mats have there. And then just pick one. And just go ahead and have fun adding it, your rope to your mat to make the design you want. I was going to make title this um, DIY as anthropology dupe, but I decided not to. Um, but if you do shop there or like their decor, both of these projects that I'm doing today basically came from anthropology. Um, but I just I want to say they're more of a look-alike than an actual dupe because they're not exactly the same as the ones on anthropology, but they do have the same style. Um, so what I decided to do after I added my two smaller circles and my larger one in the center, I went ahead and grabbed the regular uh, nautical rope that I had a little piece of it and wrapped it around the larger center circle. So once I was done with that, I went ahead and got my jute twine and this roll of jute twine I purchased at Walmart. It was just more cost effective and uh, more budget friendly for me to buy it at Walmart than it was for me to get. Uh, a few packages from Dollar Tree so I'll leave that link down below and let you know which one I purchased but again it was from Walmart so just go ahead and add a strip of glue to one of the corners of your um, mat and then just continue gluing your uh, jute twine in straight lines all the way up to your first circle And this is where it becomes time consuming. The circles weren't too uh, hard to do and it didn't take them much time at all. But this part um, is where you really need to go ahead and just have a seat and make sure you're nice and comfortable so you can continue to just glue straight lines of jute twine um, on your mat. 
but it does and is worth it. It is very pretty in person, very pretty. Um, and again, like I said, it is very durable. So it's something that you know that you can use, you know, all season or even a whole entire year or what have you in an area where there's a lot of walking. I wouldn't even have a problem placing this somewhere like that as well. So just continue adding your um, your twine until you get to your first circle like I am here. Once you get to your first circle, glue all the way to you get to that point where the circle's at. Then you're gonna start adding your jutine around your circle, just like this. Now when you get to that other corner, just go ahead and start adding glue straight and then bend your jutine to uh, form that little corner and then just continue the same process of adding glue straight down and pressing onto your jutwine to, to attach it to your rug or your mat. And just continue doing this. And um, as you go, you're going to notice that of course, your rope around your circle is gonna get bigger and bigger and it'll end up getting to the point where you have no more space to wrap the, the jute twine around your circle and um, I'll show you how to do that as well and continue with your mat without having to cut your rope. Um, but if you wanted to cut your rope in strips, feel free to do that as well. I just wanted to do it this way so I wouldn't have to continue cutting and gluing and cutting and gluing. So I just went around the circles until I couldn't anymore and then I started making more of a design that way. See how it gets to the point, and then you're just gonna wrap it back to um, the other way and to, instead of going back around the circle. Right here, I'm just gonna go back instead of going around in the circle the, like the way I was to begin with, if that makes sense. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. And that's how you end up making more of a design as well. I have those um, hot glue finger protectors, but I never use them, but I would recommend you use it for this project because you are gonna burn your fingers rubbing that, adding that rope to your mat. Or, you know, maybe get a pencil or something like that to glue and hold onto the rope while you're gluing, <laughs> gluing it onto the mat. You end up on one side and basically you just add the glue going back the opposite way and then you're just going to fold your jute twine at that corner and then just keep gluing. Again, just making sure you try to stay as close as possible to the rope and not leave any gaps. So once you get to that edge of the larger circle, again, just fold it and then start wrapping the rope around your circle to attach it to the other end. and you go all the way from one end of the mat to the other. Again, just wrapping it around whatever circle or arches or anything that you have on your mat, just to make it that one continuous seam line.
like I had asked before. I, I'm really loving this style of 2020 of all the magazines that I've seen and on Pinterest and all the 2020 styles, you know, everything that's coming up and the trends. I'm really loving this style because I don't think it's just bohemian style or um, I think it can go into any style. But like I asked at the beginning, you know, you guys let me know, do you feel the same way? Is this something that because I love farmhouse style, but I also love the shabby chic style. And I'm just like a collection of, of different styles. It just, what I think is pretty is what I add to my home. I'm not really one to be very, very picky, but I tend to go for certain styles, which one of them is farmhouse. And another one would be bohemian style. But um, yeah, I just think this would fit in either one of those homes, even the more modern, clean line. Um, homes even if you don't want the brown jute twine color I mean they have all different colors of rope that you can purchase the white ones or like my daughter said you can just paint it or even spray paint it a different color if you wanted a black or a pink or you know the list goes on and on just depending on what you want to spray paint it but this style that's right now trending a lot is all the ropes and you know some wood tones and natural tones and I just think it looks so pretty and like I said I just I feel like it could go into any kind of different home um, but yeah let me know I'm just really curious to know are you really enjoying these 2020 styles and all the new trends that are coming out for the home and also um, what's your style and do you would you use this in your home so once you start getting almost to the end of your larger circle as you can see you just keep wrapping it around This is where I ended up having to cut it once I ended up uh, with ending, uh, I'm sorry, ended up at the top of my mat from the larger circle. And as you can see, this is where you start getting more of that pattern and your style on your mat. Um, because of where the circles that I place the mat is where the bents and um, the twists and all that are going to be on your rug. So here, once you get to the top of your circle and you can't go around it anymore, do the same concept. Wrap it around as far as you can to the top of your rug and then basically add glue back down and just fold your um, jute twine and then glue it back down again. And then here is where I just basically continued this process until I finished that whole corner. And once you're done with this mat, make sure you at least leave it for a few hours to sit and dry before you actually walk on it. Um, I left it overnight, but I'm sure you would need to leave it at least for a few hours. Um, again, just to make sure all that hot glue is dry before you start stepping on it and kind of moving the rope around. But once it's completely dry, just use it as any other kind of mat. So once you get to the corner of this mat, what you're going to do is basically cut your rope and then we're going to glue the end to the back of my um, the back of your mat.
And what I did, I didn't show you on camera, but what I did was once I glued it and I was finally done with my mat, I just added a little tape of Gorilla Glue, um, the black tape Gorilla Glue, to where I attached my um, boot twine to the back of my mat, just to give it that extra secure um, so it wouldn't unravel on me. So here I am cutting it and basically just gluing it to the back of my mat. And that's where I placed my Gorilla Glue once I was done. Now we're gonna start at the final corner. And basically that was the only time I cut my rope until this point. So just go ahead and start adding your rope. And again, just doing it from side to side all until you finish filling in that corner. Once you get to that circle at the end, you're going to do the same concept, just keep going in circles once you get to that point. So here, once you get to that rope, um, that circle, and you can't go anymore, what you're gonna do is just go around the circle. And this was one of the reasons why I decided to use two different kinds of sizes in rope, the Drew Twine from Walmart and also the nautical rope from Dollar Tree that I unraveled is because I wanted those three circles to be more defined um, and they will be more noticeable because it's a larger rope. But if you don't mind that or you don't want that look, just use one size of rope and it would be the same thing, just wouldn't be as noticeable. So here I am at the end, and then basically I'm just gonna wrap it around one more time, the larger circle right here, to connect it to my other end. And then I'm gonna fill that one corner up, just gluing it back and forth. Now once I got to that end, basically I just glued it and added it all the way to that other corner that you see that I need to use to fill in. So I just went straight down and glued it on and then continued that little spot. We're almost done. <laughs> And now since I'm using my hot glue gun, if you decide to do it this way or use E6000, um, one thing you can do is get your blow dryer and just blow dry it, um, your mat, so it can remove all of the glue 
but since I also decided to burn my mat to get rid of all those um, loose little twine hairs is what I call them um, it basically burns away the hot glue as well so just go ahead and get your lighter and just lightly coat all your mat and burn all those little strings and um, extra little strands and glue strings that are around your mat And this makes a huge difference when you make rope projects. Um, it just gives it more of a cleaner, nicer look because it doesn't have all that um, extra fringe or, or uh, stuff around your mats and your rope. And this is how much rope I had left from that one large roll. Now here are my candle holders slash faces that you can go use either side. So which one of these projects are your favorite or are you going to use all of them? And if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and share with friends and family. Until next time, you guys stay blessed. Bye.